says, uh, I brought one of your records to school and I got in a lot of trouble. <laughs> Can you help? <laughs> I swear to God. And uh, I said, listen, I, I got things. I, I have a lot. You may not think that I have a life, but I, I do have a life. I can't drop everything and go to Michigan for sake. <laughs> Represent you in court. favorite uh, bumper sticker, or my current favorite bumper sticker, Horn Broken, Watch for Finger. Uh, some of these I don't remember where they came from. <laughs> but I'll make something up that might be better. It's kind of like when you're at the movies and you're watching a really bad film and someone leans in and says, you know, this is a true story. <laughs> Does it really improve the film? <laughs> um, this is a song about an automobile. I had a, a 55 Buick Roadmaster when I was a, a kid. <laughs> Actually, this is really, uh, uh, was inspired by uh, an old friend of mine named Larry Beezer, who uh, I was staying at uh, the Tropicana Hotel, and I, uh, I got a knock on the door very late, and I was in a clap for the Tropicana. <laughs> Excellent. I don't think I got any new towels for the whole, like, nine years I was there. <laughs> But I never asked. I didn't want to upset anybody. <laughs> uh, this is about, uh, what was it about again? It was about, uh, it was about the car. Uh, all right, Beezer, uh, Beezer came over at about 2 a.m. He said, I'm on a date and she's only 17 and I've got to get her back to Pasadena. <laughs> and all I've got left on the car is reverse. <laughs> I said, how can I help? <laughs> he said, I need gas money. And uh, so he s 
he sold me a couple of jokes, and he said, y you, can t you can have these jokes, and you don't even have to tell folks that they're mine because you, you paid for them, for God's sake. <laughs> and I said, that sounds like a, a good uh, deal to me. Anyway, he, he drove home in reverse on the Pasadena freeway <laughs> in the slow lane. <laughs> But uh, I think they should give awards for that type of thing. You know? <laughs> but um, anyway, it was a 55, um, what was it? It was a 55 Caddy. <laughs> for about five years when I was a teenager. There was a very large man who worked in the kitchen uh, as a professional, and apparently he'd grown. It was the question of either expanding the kitchen or getting rid of him and hiring someone smaller. 
And uh, fortunately for me, they went with a small guy. And uh, so this is, oh, um, well, I'm not there yet, let's see. Uh, Bud, uh, this is about Bud. Uh, Bud was one of those guys who came and had a little cot in the back, and when he was uh, having trouble with his wife, he would come in the back door and he would just stay in the back of the restaurant for like three or four weeks. <laughs> but he was also a plumber, and I, I was a dishwasher, and uh, one night uh, Bud was, uh, you know, doing the, uh, the snake in the toilet, and, uh, but it was an electric snake, and, and there was a tremendous amount of power on the snake, and um, and my job was to stand near Bud and um, just watch him. <laughs> and Bud had it covered, and uh, so I watched Bud with the snake and the motors winding up. <laughs> and finally, the snake came out of the toilet and whipped around the bathroom. <laughs> and uh, that was the scary part. <laughs> it was like a horror movie. And then the lights went out as it slammed into the bulb and it hit Bud in the side of the head and he went down cold. <laughs> and uh, I knew he was dead. <laughs> I knew it couldn't end any other way. <laughs> And somehow I also knew that it was my fault. So I, I went into the, um, to my boss and I said, uh, Joe, I, uh, I don't know how to put this. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna say it real fast. I killed Bud. <laughs> and they, they uh, came into the bathroom and realized that Bud was, by then he was coming back uh, alive and uh, that Bud was not dead. And, uh, Bud not being dead, I rode on that for years. <laughs> I could just think about Bud not being dead and, and uh, it was kind of like a, a real high for me. <laughs> we have a swear jar at home. And uh, you know what a swear jar is? It's a, it's a jar in the middle of the kitchen and every time you say a bad word, you have to put in a buck. And um, it helps. You know, because we have a mortgage and everything. The idea was over time, what, what, what you do is uh, that, you, you know, at the end of the month or whatever, you go and check out the, the, the money in the swear jar, maybe you got like 40 bucks or something. You go buy a tree and then you plant the tree and then you, you get the picture. And we took all those bad words and we made something good out of it. You know? I got in the habit of getting up in the morning and putting in a 10. <laughs> Just taking out a little insurance. <laughs> we were coming home uh, one night and uh, we'd had a really good month of no swearing and uh, my wife said to the whole family, okay, everyone's been really good, so for the next five minutes you can say anything you want in the car. <laughs> That was fun. Uh, I can't repeat everything that was said in the car, because it's television. But it, uh, anyway. There's a house on my block. That's a bed and cool. The folks moved out of it a long time ago. And they took all their things and then never came back. Looks like it's haunted with the windows all cracked. Once 
someone's heart break Or did someone do somebody wrong But a beam was all cracked Was peeled off the wood The papers were stacked on the porch where I stood told you to stay in the car. <laughs> That's family for you. Uh, New Jersey. And um, this is a song for my wife. And for New Jersey. stay at the Chelsea Hotel all the time. And, uh, okay, was that for the Chelsea or for New York? <laughs> I was, uh, I was sitting around one night, um, I was watching the Oxbow incident on television uh, in my uh, underwear, and uh, it was all by myself. It was a very private moment. <laughs> and, uh, This is going somewhere. Uh, so all of a sudden, um, there's a key that goes into the, the door. What I assumed was my door. Uh, and the door came open, and, and a guy and his girlfriend come in to the room, and they close the door, and they're they're arguing in the in the entryway. And uh, this was upsetting to me. <laughs> Not only the arguing, but just the interruption. <laughs> it was unfair. Anyway, she got mad. She went into the bathroom and locked herself in the bathroom. And, and uh, this guy is, 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 is real nervous. And he's got his hand in his coat like this. And there's a, a lump in his coat, you know. And I know it's not a sandwich. 
And he tells me I can stay. So. I know I can stay. This is my room. What had happened though, and, and this, this happens a lot, and, and it, is that uh, they were there the night before, see? And they hung on to their key, and uh, I used to do that. And then, uh, and then they came back the following night, not knowing that someone else would be staying in the room, or they took their chances, and they, yeah. You know. So there we all are, all three of us. He's arguing, I'm missing my movie. It was the real exciting part where Anthony Quinn is, you know, praying in Spanish and he's on the, the, the horse and they're putting a the rope around his neck. And I said, geez, I waited two hours for this moment and I, now I got drama in the bathroom. It worked out though. I, I, uh, I said, listen, what you guys need is a room of your own. So I gave the guy 50 bucks, so I said, go get a room. And he did. And he brought me back the change. <laughs> and gave me a, a kind of blessing like this. And so everybody was happy. It was a happy ending. And, uh, this is for Kathleen. There's no time for the corner boy. Down in the street making all that noise. Don't want no girls on 8th Avenue. But tonight I'm gonna be with you. But tonight I'm gonna take that ride. Cross the river to the Jersey side. Take my baby to the corner for me. And I'll take you home. All right, down the shore, everything's all right. You and your baby on a Saturday night. You know all my dreams come true. And I'm walking down the street with you. Sing sha la 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 sha la
Thank you. Thank you. This is the neighbor that um, we all become. You see, I guess it all, all comes down to knowing two or three things about the guy who lives next door, and that's all you need to know. He said he was from Tampa, but he has Indiana plates. <laughs> He said he was in the service for 20 years. But he's only 20 years old. <laughs> anyway. I wonder, from time to time, in the middle of the night, when I hear things like that, to those magazines and he never waves when he goes by he's hiding something from the rest of us he's all to himself I think I know why he took down the tire swing from the pepper tree he has no children of his own you see he has no dog and he has no friends and his lawn is dying what about all those packages he sends? What's he building in there? What's he building in there? With that hook light on the stairs. What's he building in there? I'll tell you one thing. He's not building a playhouse for the children. What's he building in there? What's that sound from underneath the door? He's pounding nails into a hardwood floor. And I swear to God, I heard someone moaning low. And I keep seeing the blue light of a TV show. What's he building in there? He has a router and a table saw. You wouldn't believe what Mr. Stitches saw. There's poison underneath the sink, of course. There's also enough formaldehyde to choke a horse. What's he building in there? I heard he has an ex-wife in some place called Mayor's Income, Tennessee. And he used to have a consulting business in Indonesia. But what's he building in there? What's he building in there? He has no friends, but he gets a lot of mail. I bet he spent a little time in jail. What's he building in there? I heard he was up on the roof last night signaling with a flashlight. And what's that tune he's always whistling? What's he building in there? What's he building in there? We have a right to know.
Most American um, automobile horns beep in the key of F. Did you know that? It's true. And in Kentucky, you're required to bathe at least once a year. So we left Kentucky. It was a, um, this is about, um, you know, uh, Sarah Bernhard was, uh, was an actress many, 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 many years ago. Um, and uh, uh, towards the end of her career, uh, she, she, she was one of the great uh, stage actresses of, of all time. And uh, towards, towards the end, she was uh, doing uh, uh, Shakespeare in a little bar. And um, <laughs> she'd had a, 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 one of her legs amputated. <laughs> was uh, purchased by Parm and Bailey. Uh, <laughs> and, um, and they were displaying her leg in a, in a, in a big case with, with formaldehyde and a, and a little brass plate and everything. And, uh, and uh, apparently at, at, at that time in her career, her leg was making more money than she was. <laughs> True story. And, uh, <laughs> Strange. And uh, I need to. So whenever I get depressed, I think about that, and uh, I say I don't got it so bad. Um, so this is a, a story about some uh, strange weather, which is what seems. <laughs> All weather is strange when you're strange. <laughs> Will ya take me across the channel? London Bridge is falling down. Strange a woman tries to save all that a man would try to drown. And it's the rain that they predicted. It's the forecast every time. The roses died because you picked it. I believe that brand is mine.
mosquitoes are somehow attracted more to the color blue than any other color. Tom Rosset. They have feelings too, you know. <laughs> and it's illegal to hunt uh, camels in Arizona. Believe me, I got in big trouble. <laughs> I didn't marry a man, I married a mule. I said, baby, you gotta get behind a mule. I guess at a certain point, um, folks stopped writing about animals and started writing about cars. I doubt if you know anybody who owns a mule. Shoot the 
Vega with Buddy Joe Holtz. I'm digging all the way to China with a silver spoon while the hangman fumbles with a noose, boys. The hangman fumbles with a noose, you got to get behind the pew. In the morning, they proud. Get behind the pew. In the morning, they proud. Get behind the pew. If you liked what you heard, go to VH1.com and check out a pair of Tom Waits songs that didn't make it into Storytellers. Two exclusive live Tom Waits songs are waiting to be heard at VH1.com. Right now, only at VH1.com. Mm -hmm.